ACC PM, we are on the road this week. Uh, a couple days here to Amelia Island. Great weather, great beaches, terrific people, awesome. Everything. Food's great. Food's great. And uh, by the time we get done here, Taylor, we are headed north. Not necessarily back to Charlotte we where the Lutz's Studios. We're heading to this guy's town right here. Jeff Halfley, head football coach of Boston College. Because the show is coming to Baston on Friday at Fenway Park. How are we doing? Doing great. How are you guys? Look at me. Look at your short sleeves. I mean, I, you don't even look I, like the Boston College guy. Just, you look like you just got off the links. I wish I did. I just came from the uh, pool area. It was nice to put on a short sleeve shirt. Though yesterday was nice in Boston, so you guys, you can dress we're like pumped. that. I think we're finally in the spring. We Let's checked it. the weather, and it looks like it's going to get cold at night, but we're going to need all your Boston recs. Never been. Really excited. Trying You've to come never check been out to Boston. Never been to Boston. I'd like to come check out campus. So we'll you should see. come. You should come check out campus. All right. It's beautiful. I, I've been Tour to Chestnut guide. Hill. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful place. Great city. Great food. And we're going to Fenway Park. Do the uh, show. One of the, one, to be. one of the best. Uh, one of the best ballparks. Great area. There's so much to do right around Fenway. And then the Celtics are playing, so you can try My to Miami double, Heat. Double it up. It's a big deal. And check out the the garden. So it should be a really fun. You can weekend. come serve as our, our one of our baseball analysts if you'd like. The door is always open. Coach Gambino is doing a great job with those guys. I mean, unbelievable. You talk about a story from last year to this year and how he's got it going, and not a better guy. And so we wish him all the luck. Acacia, uh, a nice win yesterday. So things are really good at BC right now. Congrats to both of them. Yep. Good luck to the women's lacrosse. Good luck to the baseball team. Um, and awesome that you guys are going to come hang out in Boston. Yeah, we're man, we're looking forward to it. All right, so uh, you tell us. Walk us through the next couple of days to the eyes of a football coach given all the crazy topics you can get into. What's yeah, this like? um, you kind of look at the agenda, you see all the topics, and obviously they're the big top topics that people want to talk about. Um, for us, it's everything from officiating the rule changes to sponsors to things that we want to talk about as coaches to get done. Then we meet with the athletic directors. Um, so there is a lot going on. I think we meet today from 3 to 6. Tomorrow we meet from about, I think, 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So we're not really going to get to see much of anything but the meeting rooms, and I'm really excited about that. Hey, the view is nice from inside, too. You can at least look out the window, if nothing else. There is no view in and those rooms. And there's no view and in those. And it's freezing, so I had to bring long sleeves. It makes me, makes me feel like if, we're back in Boston. But if anybody has the advantage in cold conditions, it's got to be Halfley from B.C. You and Dino Babers have That's, a huge, and, and, and Narduzzi. That's why it's on. nice to play Miami in uh, late November yeah, on a night game. That's Amen. It. So you can sign us up for that game anytime you want. So when you look at that agenda and, and you talk about these different things, what is something that stands out to you this week that maybe you would like to see changed or at least get some movement on? There's a lot of things I think we'd all like to get changed. I don't know if now is the time or place where that's actually going to happen. I think the two biggest ones for us coaches that we'll probably talk most about when no one else is around is NIL, tampering, mm. transfer portal. I mean, that's... Our last meeting that we had, it was it was the same thing. Tampering, NIL, what are we going to do to fix it? What are we going to do to fix it within our own conference, right. right? Are we going to allow tampering to go on in our own conference and kind of turn an eye to that? Or are we going to do something about it? Um, but those are the big issues, I think, for the coaches. And then, then you'll get into smaller ones about the season, about how we're scheduling games, about, you know, little things that we need to discuss. But those are the big ones. And truthfully, I don't really see anything coming about it this week other than generate more conversation than ideas. There's really smart guys in that room, which yeah. is what I was saying to you before. Um, really smart guys. So I'm sure that we'll have good conversations and, and hopefully come up with a plan. I, I'm going to ask a really goofy question here. Uh, from a tampering perspective, if it's as simple as, hey, I got a really good player, and you went through it with Zay Flowers, right? We talked about a bunch on the air. And I've got X, Y, and Z schools outside the footprint. could be even within the footprint that say, hey, listen, you need to come play for us, or hey, we're going to offer you X, Y, and Z, and all that stuff. Coach, why doesn't somebody just come out and say, you know what, school X, Y, and Z just offered my player $1.6 million. Would shame Call not come out. into play here in some shape, way, or form? Or is there an unwritten rule that coaches don't do that to other coaches? I've always been fascinated by that. It is fascinating, and I think people have. I mean, I, I think it's been done. I think some have done it publicly. Some have picked up the phone and made phone calls, which mm. you've read about. I, but what is getting done about that? What's happening? Nothing's changing, right? Um, and then it's the player. I mean, I've had players come to me and say, coach, I'm telling you this because I'm staying, but I just got this DM from this position coach at this school. Mm. Now, please 
keep my word and don't say anything. So am I gonna, am I gonna turn my back on my player who trusted me enough to come to me in the first place and say, basically, I want you to hear this from me. I'm staying, this is what's happening. So if you hear any third parties, don't worry about it. So I've had that three or four times this past year. Um, puts you in a tough spot. Puts you in a really tough spot. You, you trust me enough to, to tell me and then I'm gonna break your trust by, by making a phone call publicly. You go to the NCA, you do what you can, and then they're gonna want evidence, right? Yeah. They're gonna wanna see it. They're gonna wanna see that or hear the recording or talk to the player. So there's a fine line, uh, but I think more and more coaches are speaking out. And then there's some that might just be saying, hey, it's happening, it's part of it, which is horrible. Um, move on. All right, so Mac Brown did say something recently, and I'm sure that you read and talked to SI, and, and you mentioned NIL, and obviously it's a big talking point that the Power Five should essentially separate from all the other divisions and, and create a mini NFL with a salary cap type thing. And I know you're an NFL guy. You have experience in that department. You know how those ranks work. You know how the college ranks work. Uh, is there any thought to that? Has that been a conversation amongst coaches and amongst the conference? We haven't talked about it, very truthfully, as ACC coaches. That's not one thing we've sat down and talked about. But if there's going to continue to be money involved, if there's going to continue to be people transferring, which again, I think, there's a, I think there's a really good place for both. The two together without rules is a perfect storm. Um, but there has to be something, whether it's a cap, whether it's a player cap, whether it's a school cap, whether it's restrictions on when you can transfer, how you can transfer, there has to be something. There does, there's gotta be guidelines and there has to be restrictions, but then we need to follow them. Because ultimately, us coaches, we need to follow whatever rules are put in place and stick to it, and until that happens, then it's our fault too. Um, this team, I know we talked to you about after post spring and all that stuff. I, I got a sense though, the last time we had you on the show, and you're always an upbeat, enthusiastic guy, but I get a sense that you said, you know what, offensive line, get back to depth again, and I kid around about uh, your defense, and you're like, now we're talking, right? I, I get a sense that you feel that this team upcoming for the 23 season could be one of those teams that nobody from the national media is going to talk about, but you could absolutely cause some real problems for everybody in the league. I like this team, and you know I've been pretty honest with people who've asked me in my first three years as the head coach, and I like this group. We're getting older. We're, we're still young. And last year, as I told you guys, 37 of the 44 in the two deep at the end of the year were first or second year players. We kept those young guys. That was my biggest concern is we have to keep these young players like Donovan Israku, who led the ACC in sacks as a sophomore. We had to keep young guys like that. We need to get old. We need to develop the players we recruit, which is why this transferring makes it hard for us. We need to develop them within our scheme with fundamentals and technique, which there's nothing more important than that. And we're finally starting to do that a little bit. Our offensive line is healthy. There's actually competition there right now, which we talked about last year was who's up. Can I pull a guy from defense to play guard, right? Who's gonna play center? Against Wake Forest, we had a kid play center that never snapped the ball in high school. Mm. Right? But, they, but they never stopped battling. So they went through all of that, and then they went down to, to Raleigh, and they beat NC State after going down 14 nothing, And they didn't quit. On senior night. On senior night, with a team that was old, with I think Dave Dorn is an incredible coach, and he did a great job with that team. I think it was one of the best defenses in the conference. And with a freshman quarterback thrown to a freshman receiver, we won at the end of the game with no quit. With kids who'd been through a hard year that probably weren't ready to play, so then you enter the spring with some of these young guys that have confidence, have a little bit of experience, and they're getting excited because they know what it feels like now. And it's a team that's gotten very close together in the off season. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they can do and no one's gonna talk about us and that's fine. It's, it's better that way because we shouldn't talk. We haven't done anything. So we need to go out on the field and we need to prove it to everybody. Um, but I am excited where we are. We have a ways to go, but I'm excited for training camp. I know we both loved the way you guys finished last year, despite what the record said. It was the fight that you guys had uh, week in and week out, which was really so impressive. You mentioned having to get older. That means you have to stay, and that means you don't go in the transfer portal. Guys like Isaiah Flowers, who stayed and committed to you guys. Christian Mahogany this year, who has potential to be another first-round draft pick for you guys next year. He decided to come back and stay and not go elsewhere. Have you seen that trickle-down effect with your other players to say, Hey, look around. I had the opportunity to maybe leave, but I, I want to do what these guys are doing too. I do. I think it started with Zion Johnson, who could have left, but trusted us to come back. We have a lot of guys with NFL experience, make a lot of calls. Where are you going to fall in the draft? Zion, you're going to be a third-round pick. Come back. 
the people we've talked to, if you do this, this, and this, you'd be a first round pick. Zay Flowers, do the same thing. With Zay, it was a little harder because it wasn't only the NFL we were battling, it was other teams we were battling right. within college. And I think our players see that, they start to trust us, and they say, look, Zay did it, Zion did it, we can do it too. And then the other thing, you get that guy closer to a BC degree, that's a life-changing degree, it is. You're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna leave after your junior year and forfeit all these credits when you're two semesters away from getting a degree that literally will change your life far greater than the NFL, which is what we continue to sell to them, which is why I do believe our place is different. It's for somebody who loves ball, wants to succeed in ball, but believes there is life after football. And those are the kids that we have to find. Mm -hmm. And when they come, they'll want to stay. We just showed what we could do. And it will take time, but I'm very excited about it. All right, I got an offbeat question for you. With, with all the meetings that are taking place in the next couple of days, when you walk into the room full of ACC football coaches, do you gravitate to a couple of guys? Is, is there like a click? that Halfley hangs out with. He's or, in the back of the class. They're, they're, they're elbowing each so, other. I, I mean, because you've got enough compadre. seniority now. I mean, we've got some new faces in the league and all that stuff. So when you walk in the room, <laughs> how, tell me what you, how do you scope it? Are you looking for Mac Brown because he's the senior leader? I mean, Dabo's on some crazy <laughs> safari. I don't know where he's in Africa or somewhere. <laughs> so I mean, how do you break that down when you walk in there? Wait, is Dabo really not here? No, no. he's in Africa. On a safari? On a safari. That is unbelievable. It's cost him 10 grand. I gotta text him as soon as we he get may, here. He I'm may be you. calling in. Who this might is, be zooming in from Africa these. for all he, he's we gotta know. be here for Ten these. grand. So, I mean, so is he one of your guys? I, I mean I like Dabo. Dabo. I mean you finally, I, you finally had him a in, chance to come up to Chestnut Hill, you got a chance to show him the facility. He hadn't been up there in hundred years. I know. When when I came in <laughs> here as a young coach, um, the cool thing was a lot of those guys, they were really good to me. I'm not a, I'm not a clicky guy. I kinda go around, say hello to everybody. Um, Constantly trying to pick other coaches' brains, like Coach Clawson, Coach Doran, um, Coach Narduzzi. I've known Dave Doran for a long time, Coach Clawson for a long time. I have a lot of respect for the coaches um, in the ACC. I look what Mike Norvell just did, right? Sure. And last year at this time, everybody was saying, Mike Norvell, whatever, they had three, four, five wins, he should be gone, right? They already had his replacement, and now look what he's done, right? You get more teams like that in the ACC, top 10 team, he'll probably be a top five team, um, and hopefully he continues. I mean, I'm one guy. I mean, I want to see the ACC teams do well. I said it to you guys. The coolest thing about this conference is each year you kind of get a team or two that surprises and makes a run. Um, and like then Elko last year, too. Yeah, like what a great job he did, yeah. right? Taking Duke and, and winning all those games and another really smart football coach. So I like this group. It's fun to listen to. Um, I probably listen more than I talk. Um, I probably laugh a lot, probably without showing it. <laughs> Um, but they're fun times. If you guys could have a mic in there, it would be I, pure entertainment. We wish. I have offered that that should be part of the ACC network, that we just put a camera in the corner and just roll tape, man. Let it like rip. Like hard knocks. Yeah, just let it rip. If nothing else, read body language. That's part of the best part. You, I, can, you can decipher what people are talking about. I bet you the meetings would go much quicker. I know it would. <laughs> it would be a lot quicker. <laughs> to the point, without question. Well, listen, we look forward to seeing you Friday. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'll come by and say hello to you guys. All right. And uh, good luck again, uh, Coach Cambino. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, Best man. chowder in the city? Oof. Got a, got a spot? I, I'll let I'm you know. Right, I'm going to write it I'll, down. I'll, All right. I'll get you the best spot. Perfect. It'll be fun. Can we drop your name? You think it gets us anywhere? I mean, the back room table? Because the last time you know we, we interviewed you once where you walked away from dinner. You were in a back alley, beautiful lit. I mean, I don't know. You it was cold that. It was freezing. Yeah, it was outside. freezing. And you still had the dedication. We're at, Hallmark the, we're at movie. the bar. It looked yeah. like a Hallmark yeah. movie. Right. The yeah. bricks, the right. lights. It was beautiful. That's Boston. And I didn't want to leave my guys and stay in the office, so we were out. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there. Drop my name. Someone will be nice to you. I'm Hopefully. nice to most people. They, may, they won't, they won't do anything. We may try that tonight. Don't do it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it tonight. All right. We'll see you this week. I